Mr. Suskind, you've been on the air longer than any personality with a continuous show. 1958, you've seen a lot of changes. Uh, all for the good? Oh, no. Most for the bad. Television in uh, 1958, when we started uh, the talk show, had hope. There was some idealism. Uh, there was a kind of a wonderful enthusiasm. This God-given new invention, this instrument called television, the potential to inform, enlighten, amuse, entertain, was limitless. And I had the folk called Playhouse and Mr. Peepers and Armstrong Circle Theater, and my other colleagues had Studio One and Craft Theater and U.S. Steel Hour. And it's been steady downhill ever since. Television today is a sea of junk with an occasional beacon like Hill Street Blues or St. Elsewhere, or Cheers, or 60 Minutes. But that's it. You're There's no other television worth a damn except the evening news. You're talking commercial television. How about yeah, well, public, public television? Public television is wonderful. Well, you know, it could be better. It needs money. It's sort of a semi-bankrupt all the time. It's always hovering on the brink of poverty. You're a man of great ideas. You've developed a lot of talent. Is there any way that public television, do you have any ideas, the way they can raise money other than begging for funds on these various... Well, sure. First, improve the programming. I mean, make television, uh, public television, uh, an absolute electric excitement, you know. Uh, it's, it's doing a far better job than, pub than commercial television, but it's not near good enough. There isn't enough showmanship in public television. You've got a lot of academics, and you've got a lot of sons of rich fathers. And uh, you haven't got enough money to attract the talent, so you've got to inspire them with the opportunity to express themselves that they could not find elsewhere. Now, CBS, NBC, and ABC have nothing to offer an intelligent, cultured, well-intentioned talent producer, directorial, whatever. Be, be an outstretched hand to such talent in public television. You need money, yes, you cannot do it with spit, but uh, people would work for scale. I have worked for scale in public television. I've worked for no profit because I make enough money elsewhere. Just the chance to do something good and do it pure. Don't abridge Hedda Gabler. Don't do a watered-down version of uh, Merchant of Venice. Do the whole Merchant of Venice, and t actors will, stars will come racing to do it. Who are some of the most interesting people you've interviewed, and are there some that you've interviewed that you wouldn't want back? I wouldn't want Nehru back. He, I, he was a fairly unpleasant man, snob. Uh, who is else? It, is I wouldn't want Jermaine Greer back. She wrote a book about the feminine uh, liberation movement or something. She's insupportable, insufferable. Uh, but the ones I liked were Lord Bertrand Russell, Harry Truman. I enjoyed Richard Nixon. He was very forthcoming, finally. It took four hours, but if you look eye to eye at a man for four hours, he won't escape you. Did he open up as much as he did recently on the tapes? That CBS no, ran? I didn't ask him if he kissed his wife or held hands in public. Or, but on the questions, he was very evasive for the first two hours. And that's why we had to go four hours to get the truth out of him. Tricky Dick is not a misnomer. But he's probably the most brilliant mind we've had in the White House since Franklin Roosevelt in terms of foreign policy. And Roosevelt was wrong on the subject of Russia. Potsdam, and, no, he wasn't at Potsdam. Truman was at Potsdam. You're too young. To no, I recall. I... No, the other great one, oh, there's so many. Adlai Stevenson was very interesting. Uh, Hubert Humphrey was a great man. Do you like political uh, figures uh, as compared to theatrical people? No. They matter more. Politicians. Politics is the art of governing. That's a Greek word. Uh, and therefore, we think a politician in a list of uh, professions, the lowest on the list, Americans voted a Gallup survey, 
was politician because uh, Richard Nixon and others have succeeded in putting it into public disrepute. But politics was meant to be the art of governing, a high, noble profession. I like politicians when they do a good job. Uh, the fellow in the White House at the moment is not doing a very good job because he's unequipped. He's an actor, after all. Do you think there's anyone in the wings that could oh, do a good job? I see a man clearly on the horizon that can do a wonderful job. Is he in the running? Oh, yeah, he's going to win the Democratic nomination, Walter Mondale of Minnesota. And what qualifications does he have? That Eight years as Attorney General of the state of Minnesota, incorruptible, a solid law enforcer, a man of noble intention, an excellent execution of the law. And um, I think it was two terms, he was into his third term, at least nine, ten years as senator from the state of Minnesota. A wonderful senator with conscience, integrity, and a sense of reality and common sense. Hell, as a vice president, if you were vice president, what would we know of Harry Truman if Roosevelt hadn't died? We'll never know what kind of president he would have made until November because Carter, thank God, lived and completed one term. And thank God it was only one term. <laughs> or we'd still have our prisoners in Tehran. Do you think that uh, entertainment personalities should become involved in politics? I certainly do. Shouldn't uh, delicatessen owners and waiters and dentists and people that do manicures. It does hurt sometimes if they become it involved in the case of Ed Anzer. It hasn't hurt Ed Asner. Ed Asner's a very wealthy man. How's it hurt him? Well, as far as uh, CBS Carrot continuing with his series. And if he comes up with option. a good series, they'll put Ed Asner. He's going back on the air this fall on CBS in a new format. So you don't feel that it uh, has hurt Jane Fonda? Yes, because Jane did it badly. Jane became a wild-eyed screamer and, uh, and visiting the other side, the enemy troops. Hell, if we're at war with somebody and you visit the enemy, you've either lost your marbles or you're rather indiscreet. No, Jane did it all wrong, but uh, telling us who she would vote for for president and why, she's a very intelligent woman and I admire her craft, her skill, and I admire her guts. But when she was younger, she was dumber. Who wasn't? I was. One final question, and it may not be easy for you to recall in 28 years of career, but do you have a highlight, oh, a, a great moment? That's like asking, which of your children do you love the best? Highlights. Harry Truman, Lord Bertrand Russell, Nikita Khrushchev. Harold Macmillan, Harold Gateskill, Hugh Gateskill, Prime Minister of England, um, the Labor Minister, um, Robert Kennedy, Adlai Stevenson, certainly no actor, and Gore Vidal, and Truman Capote, and Norman Mailer, and Dorothy Parker, and, uh, oh. The list goes on ad finitum. It's pretty finitum. It's uh, 26 and a half years. Yes. Thank you very much. Thank you.